In this video, we'll create an HTML5 and CSS3 animated sidebar menu. So let's take a look at it here before we get started. So once we open it up, you'll see that it's going to slide out. We have the X to close it at the top. Then we have our navigation items with the red hover effect and the icons to the left. Then at the bottom, we have our social media icons. So later in the video, I'm going to show you how, how you can add any icon you want here for social media and for the icons next to our navigation links which act as links themselves. So in the description of this video will be the uh, slide bar starter files including the finished version that you see right here. So the version that we'll be working on through the tutorial with index.html and style.css, I'm going to be using the free program Sublime Text uh, to edit it as we develop the menu. And then I'm also going to have it open in Google Chrome while we're building it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this aside. I have index.html and style.css open here in Sublime Text. And from the top of index.html, we have the title. Then we have a link to fontawesome.com, which is where you get the uh, names for the icons that we're using. And then we have a simple script here for opening and closing the side menu or slide menu already done for us. So we already have this slide effect going. Okay. So also in style.css, we have a Google font imported for us. So let's go ahead and get started with our first tag here. So let's start with a div ID and we're going to call it content. And this will wrap our navigation menu as well as all the content that's off to the right, which is going to push off from the left side. So then underneath that, let's add a span class and we're going to call this span class slide. And this will be for our opening button. So we'll create our link here for that. And I'm just going to leave the link blank. And then we'll say on click because we want to click the icon there. So on click. And then we'll reference the open slide menu function up here. And then open and close parentheses. Okay, then drop down underneath the link or just create some separation between the A tag there. And we'll reference the icon here from fontawesome.com. So this is going to be I class FA S FA dash bars. Okay, and if you go to font awesome or do a Google search for font awesome icons, you can see the hundreds of icons they have there, which you can use through the tutorial. So I messed something up here. I forgot to close out the I tag. And there we have our bars icon. Okay, so the next thing that we'll add will be the actual menu ID for the sidebar menu. So let's say div ID menu. And then we'll also give it a class and we're going to call it nav. Then we can drop down and close out our div. And the first thing we'll add inside of here will be the X for closing the nav menu. So we leave the link blank and then we'll say class close and then on click close slide menu open and close parentheses. And then once again in between our A tag here, let's add our icon. So this is going to be I class FAS fa dash times and then close out your i tag okay so now if we refresh there we have our open and close buttons already functioning for us because we have the script added now let's add our navigation links so drop down underneath the a tag and we'll start our first link with another a tag for our link and we'll say class item and then we'll add our icon here so this one is going to be FAS FA dash home and then we'll also give this a class and we're going to call it icon then we'll close out our I tag and write home in between that and the end of our link 
Okay, so there we have the home link. Let's go ahead and just copy this and paste it to save ourselves some time for the rest of our navigation links, and then we'll change the font awesome icons and the text. So this one is user dash circle, and then I'll change this to about. And the third one is simply images. And then this is portfolio. And then we have map dash marker. And this is location. And then the last one is actually going to be FAB rather than FAS. And then WP forms and contact. Make sure you check to see if it's FAS or FAB if you're adding your own icons in here. Okay, so there we have our navigation items. So let's add our social media links next. So we're going to put those inside of an unordered list and each one will be inside of its own list item. So li and then ahref pound, I'll leave this blank. You could do facebook.com or your link to Facebook here and then we'll add a class and we'll call it inline and then we'll add our icon from Font Awesome for Facebook which is fab fa-facebook and then close out our i tag. Okay, so now if we refresh, there we have our Facebook link with a dot next to it because it's a unordered list. And then let's go ahead and copy and paste this four times. And then all we have to do is change the social media name here. So we have Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, and YouTube. Okay, so now if we refresh, I messed something up with Instagram here. Forgot the S. Okay, there we have it. Okay, good. So now let's go over to style.css and get started from the top. So the first thing that we're going to do is a reset style on the body of our HTML document itself. And let's change our font to the Google font that's imported, Allegria Sans. And then our fallback font is Sans Serif. And then we're going to say overflow x hidden. So if we have overflowing content, we don't get a scroll feature at the bottom of our page and it simply pushes off the page. Okay, and I forgot our heading down here. So I'm going to go ahead and add that before the end of the content ID. I'll just write HTML5, CSS3, social, slide out, sidebar, nav. Okay, looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and style our content ID next. So let's give it some padding since there's some padding between the corner there and our icon. So we'll do a padding all around of 15 pixels. And then we want to add a transition. So if we click on our open button right now, it's just going to shift right over there instantly. But as you know, with the finished version, we have a smooth transition here. So what we're going to write is transition margin dash left 0 0.7 seconds. And then we'll say overflow hidden and let's give it a width of 100%. Okay, so now if we refresh and we click the open button, it's going to slide over nice and smooth for us. And we'll also do that to the closing button in just a moment. So let's style the um, the font awesome icon for the bars there. So we'll reference the slide class. So dot slide A for our link. And then we'll give it the color of black, the hex value black 000. Let's change the font size to 36 pixels. Okay, so there we have our opening icon looking just like the original. And now let's do our closing icon here. So to get to that, we'll reference the nav class and the close class. 
So we'll say dot nav dot close and then position absolute and top 8 pixels away from the top, right 22 pixels away from the right. And then margin left 50 pixels and we'll give it a font size of 30 pixels and then let's change the color to CCC which is that kind of light gray shade we're seeing. Okay so if we refresh it's going to be off to the side here because we haven't styled the actual nav yet which will be off to the left. So let's go ahead and style that now. So that'll be the nav class after our div ID menu. So we'll say dot nav We'll give it a height of 100%. And then we're going to give it a, a width of 0. I'll add the 0 in just a second. I want to see how it looks before adding 0. Position fix, Z index 1, so it appears on top of our body or content ID. And then top left, 0. Background color, 282828 which is kind of the soft black color or dark gray. Okay, so now let's add width zero. Okay, so now everything is gonna shift with it once we add width zero. All right, and then let's say overflow X hidden and we'll give it some padding on the top there So padding top 60 pixels. And then we'll give it the same transition duration as we did the open button. So 0 0.7 seconds. Okay, so now if we open it, we have our list items or navigation items with the padding up there. And it's closing nice and smooth. So now let's style the actual navigation links themselves here. So if you remember, we gave them a class called item to separate them from our social links. So we'll reference the nav class, the link, and the item class. So dot nav a dot item. And we'll say display flex and flex direction row. Padding 18 pixels top bottom, 30 pixels left right. And now if we refresh, there we have them displaying vertically for us with the flex direction row. And then font size, 30 pixels. And then let's get rid of the underline with text decoration none. And then give it the same color that we did the X with CCC as our hex value. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And we'll add our background color, which is different from the nav background color at 3D, 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 bit of a lighter gray. And then our border. So border one pixel solid CCC. Okay, so now if we refresh, it's looking pretty good, except for we don't have a border on the last navigation link. So let's add a class for that. We'll just call it last. So item space last. And then we'll reference our nav and the last class. So dot nav dot last. And then border bottom one pixel solid CCC. Okay, so now if we refresh there we have our border on the top and bottom of each one. Now let's add our hover effect. So I want to reference the um, nav a item again and then we'll write colon hover and let's change the color to white for our text which is FFF and then our background color to red which is the hex value CF000 
and then transition four seconds for when we hover over it so it doesn't change instantly to the red shade. So now let's, um, let's add a little bit of padding and make our icons a little bigger. So we'll use the icon class that we added here for our font awesome icons. So we'll reference the nav and then the icon class. We'll say padding right 10 pixels and then font size 35 pixels to make them a little bit larger here. Okay, and that looks pretty good. So it's looking just like the original except for let's move our social icons into the nav class and we'll um, want to reference the unordered list here. So let's say dot nav ul and then display flex and position absolute and then we'll give them a width of 100% and margin top 50 pixels to separate them from our regular navigation links with the border. And then we'll want to move our closing div for our div ID menu and class nav to underneath our unordered list. Okay, so now if we refresh, it's going to be on the left here. And there we have them. So now let's get rid of the dots next to them, next to each list item. So we'll say nav ul li and then list style none. And let's style our links as well. So nav ul li a and then we'll want to reference the inline class that we gave our links here to separate them from the regular links with the item class. So let's give them a font size of 26 pixels and then we'll give them that light gray color and we'll want to space them out a little bit too. So color CCC and then padding 6 pixels top bottom 5 pixels left right Okay, so now if we refresh, there we have our social links, but let's add a hover color. So the original, when we hover over them, we're seeing this red shade. So let's say nav ul lia dot inline colon hover, and then we'll just change the color to the cf 0000 hex value. Okay, so now if we refresh, there we have our social icons with the red hover effect as well as our regular navigation links here. Okay, so that does it. I want to thank you for sticking around with me through this tutorial. Please remember to like this video, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. Then I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.